Hello friends, this presentation is a part of an enemy ICT project sponsored by MHRD Government of India. Our today's topic of discussion is ethanol fermentation. As by fermentation we are going to produce ethanol on large scale, first we must understand uses of alcohol. There are various uses of alcohol such as ethanol is used as an organic solvent in variety of products. The most popular use of ethanol is as motor fuel and fuel additive like gasohol. Ethanol is used as a potent food preservative at home. Ethanol is used as the fluid in thermometers. It is used in making antiseptic soap and cosmetics as it is having antimicrobial and antifungal activities. Ethanol is routinely consumed in different forms around the world like beer, wine, gin, whiskey, etc. Ethanol plays an important role in making drugs and pharmaceuticals. Ethanol is again used in the preparation of essence and flavorings. It is it is renewable in nature which is useful for fueling clean environmental friendly compartments. Ethanol is also used in preserving biological specimens. In 1906 when the industrial alcohol act was passed the production of industrial alcohol that is ethanol became commercially feasible on a large scale. This act allowed the sale of tax-free alcohol if alcohol has first denatured to avoid its use in various alcohol beverages. But as it is a type of microbial product, biochemical process should be there behind production of ethanol. It is a biological process in which sugars are utilized to produce ethanol and carbon dioxide as metabolic waste products. This process is a complicated sequence of transformations carried out by yeast cells that converts glucose to carbon dioxide and alcohol. Before fermentation, one glucose molecule is converted into two pyruvate molecules by glycolysis and as we all know glycolysis is the first level of aerobic respiration. Most species of yeast will produce ethanol only under anaerobic condition. So ethanol fermentation is classified as an anaerobic process. However, many yeast such as Saccharomyces cerevisiae as well as Schizopsaccharomyces pombe will produce ethanol even under aerobic conditions. Now to establish fermentation industry, our first necessity is fermentation strain. As fermentation microorganisms, all yeast are not suitable. Choice of yeast for the alcohol production depends upon the composition of the medium, particularly the type of carbohydrate used in the medium. So here one table is given which shows various raw materials used in medium with specific strain of yeast. Whenever starch and sugar are utilized as raw material, Saccharomyces cerevisiae will be utilized as fermentation strain. But in the presence of lactose of whey, Candida pseudotropicalis is utilized and whenever sulfur waste liquor will be there as a raw material, Candida utilis is useful. Fermentation strain should contain several properties like they must grow rapidly, they should tolerate high concentrations of sugar, they must be able to produce abundant amounts of alcohol, they must be resistant to the produced higher concentration of alcohol. This process is used in the production of alcoholic beverages, ethanol fuel as well as in the rising of bread dough. Fermentation media. The media for the commercial production includes blackstrap molasses or corn, potatoes, grains, wood waste, sulfite waste liquor, whey, etc. For the molasses fermentation, 
to keep final sugar concentration between 10 to 18 percent because concentration greater than 20 percent are detrimental to yeast. The pH of the medium is set between 4.8 to 5. Some starchy media like corn, rye and barley can be utilized but initial starch hydrolysis is necessary. This can be done by squashing with barley malt, by mixing with dilute acids or by utilizing amylolytic enzymes of fungi like aspergillus and rhizopus. When ethanol fermentation is going on in large reactors, temperature should be kept between 21 to 27 degrees centigrade. But as heat gets evolved, it raises the temperature up to 30 degrees centigrade which bring down by cooling by cooling coils. Fermentation continues for 2 to 3 days but exact time period is based on the substrate utilized and temperature. At the end, fermentation broth contains 6 to 9 percent alcohol by volume. This alcohol yield reflects 90 to 98 percent theoretical conversion of substrate sugar to alcohol. So yields should not be confused with proof as proofing means alcohol concentration designation and it will be twice the percentage in volume of ethanol as dissolved in water. For example, 70% ethanol is 140 proof. Last most important stage is recovery of product. Ethanol is separated from fermentation broth in continuous stills. Ethanol of 95% concentration is obtained by successive distillations. To obtain 100% or absolute alcohol, special distillation technique is required. For that, 5% water is removed by forming an azeotropic mixture of benzene, water and ethanol, which then is distilled with increasing temperature. This procedure removes first the azeotropic benzene ethanol water mixture and then benzene ethanol mixture so that absolute ethanol remains. So by that we have completed discussion of each and every parameter of alcohol fermentation. Thank you. Hello friends, this lecture is a part of Anime ICT project sponsored by MHRD Government of India. Our today's topic of discussion is citric acid fermentation. Citric acid is an organic acid having number of applications like it is used as an acidulant in the pharmaceutical industries as well as food industries. It is extensively used in the production of carbonated drinks. It is used as plasticizers, employed as gelatin agent and sequestering agent. There are number of microorganisms in nature which can produce different type of organic acids from carbohydrates. This ability is demonstrated by various bacteria as well as fungi. For example, Clostridium species can able to produce acetic acid as well as butyric acid. Lactobacillus and Streptococcus species are able to produce lactic acid. Acetobacter species can produce acetic acid, gluconic acid as well as ketogluconic acid. While Aspergillus and Rhizopus species can able to produce citric acid as well as fumaric acid. Naturally, citric acid remains present in citrus fruits. In fact, for a longer period of time, citric acid was recovered commercially from processing of citrus fruits, but now it is also produced by a fungal fermentation. Till to date, chemical synthesis methods are not available in competition with the fungal fermentation of citric acid. Now let's see some historical highlights of citric acid production. In 1784, First time citric acid was isolated and crystallized from lemon juice by the Swedish chemist Carl William Skeely. 
The first ever commercial production of citric acid was launched in UK by Stuart's company by John and Edmund in 1826. In 1880, citric acid was first synthesized from glycerol. In 1893, Weimer observed occurrence of citric acid as a microbial product by Penicillium mold. In 1922, Millard recorded accumulation of citric acid in culture of Aspergillus niger under condition of nutrition deficiency. In 1923, Pfizer began fermentation based process in USA. Now, as citric acid is microbial product, definitely biochemical process will be there behind. Citric acid is one of the most important component of bacterial respiration. In nature, it is an intermediate of Krebs cycle by which carbohydrates get catabolized to carbon dioxide. The excretion of citric acid is not a normal process for microorganisms, but when they are grown under particular constraints, they can accumulate large amount of citric acid. One of the following method is used to accumulate citric acid. First one that is by mutation. One can produce mutant which may only use part of a metabolic pathway because generally glycolysis is followed by Krebs cycle where first product is citric acid and then it get recycled. But whenever mutation is created, it will allow accumulation of citric acid. Or second option is by altering the environmental conditions which inhibit the normal flow of the Krebs cycle. To increase the yield of citric acid, limited aeration is provided in the fermenter which inhibit isocitrate dehydrogenase enzyme because this enzyme will not allow accumulation of citric acid as it can produce alpha ketoglutarate from isocitrate. pH of the fermenter should be kept low because low pH inhibits the normal flow of TCS cycle and therefore encourages the production of additional citric acid. Many of the TCA enzymes can be inhibited by the removal of ions and cofactors which are essential for particular enzymes. Whenever we want to start citric acid fermentation, first necessity will be fermentation microorganisms. Citric acid can be produced by controlled growth of specific species of penicillium and aspergillus. Various species of penicillium were studied for citric acid fermentation, but Aspergillus niger proved the principal fungus for citric acid fermentation as it can produce large amounts of citric acid while growing on a carbohydrate medium. Various criteria should be checked for the selection of production strain like it should produce high yield of citric acid, an adequate amount of sporulation should be there, strain should be genetically stable, it should lack ability to degrade main product that is citric acid and it should lack simultaneous production of other organic acids like gluconic acid, oxalic acid, malic acid etc. To achieve abundant excretion of citric acid, we need to keep some points in our mind that sugar concentration should be high, either nitrogen or phosphorus concentration should be limited and concentration of heavy metals including iron and manganese should be very low. Citric acid fermentation is carried out by any one of three processes that is solid state fermentation, liquid surface culture and submerged culture process. Now first one is solid state fermentation. Now this is the process where we need to provide solid form of raw material which will provide physical as well as nutritional support. Basically it is Japanese process in which special strains of Aspergillus niger are used with solid substrate such as sweet potato starch. Mold is used to which wheat bran was substituted. The pH of bran was adjusted between 4 to 5 and additional moisture is picked up during steaming so as to get water content of mesh around 70 to 80 percent. After cooling the bran to 30 to 60 degrees centigrade, the mass is inoculated with cozy which was made by special strain of Aspergillus niger. 
since bran contains starch which on saccharification produces citric acid by amylase of aspergillus niger bran after incubation is spread in trays to a depth of 3 to 5 cm and kept for incubation at 25 to 30 degree centigrade after 5 to 8 days cozy is harvested and citric acid is extracted another process is liquid surface culture process in this case nutrients should be provided in liquid form and organisms should be inoculated in such a way that they can grow on the surface in this case aluminium or stainless steel shallow pans or trays are used sterilized medium contains molasses and salts fermentation is usually carried out by blowing spores of aspergillus niger over the surface of the solution for 5 to 6 days spore germination occurs within 24 hours and a white mycelium grows over the surface of the solution after 8 to 10 days of inoculation liquid can be drained off and citric acid can be extracted from the mycelial mat last process is submerged culture process again we need to provide nutrients in the form of liquid state but organisms are allowed to grow inside the liquid this method is quite economical in this case aspergillus japonicus that is black mold is slowly bubbled in a stream of air through a culture solution since organism shows subsurface growth and produces citric acid in culture solution the yield are inferior in comparison to liquid surface culture fermentation now last most important point is purification of citric acid the recovery of citric acid is really challenging as the harvested fermentation broth contains non fermented sugars inorganic impurities and other acids as fermentation products the method of choice is to precipitate the citric acid from fermentation broth as calcium citrate by the addition of calcium hydroxide generally fermentation broth should be hot aqueous solution having neutral ph then sulfuric acid is added to remove the calcium in the form of calcium sulfate then citric acid is further purified by treating it with activated carbon and passing through ion exchange resins the purified citric acid is evaporated to yield crystals of citric acid thank you